sort of changes everything. Dateline tonight, 10 9 From KTIV, Siouxland's News Channel, this is News 4 at 6. We've been waiting for this for too long. There's family members that have been waiting for the remains of these kids to come home for 142 years. Uh, so maybe this is the start of uh, uh, some healing. The unearthed remains of nine Native American children who died more than a century ago are now on their way home to South Dakota. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Matt Breen. Stella will be back on Monday. Those children died while attending a government-run school in Pennsylvania. Starting in the 1870s, Native American boys and girls, like the Lakota Sioux at the Rosebud Indian Reservation in South Dakota, were shipped across the country to schools like the Carlisle Industrial School. Founded in 1879, Carlisle Indian Industrial School was the flagship Indian boarding school in the U.S. At the school, students were made to cut their hair, take European names, and assimilate to white culture. They were also punished for speaking their own language and adhering to their religious and spiritual beliefs. Efforts were made to westernize the children, effectively erasing their native identity. General Henry Richard Henry Pratt, one of the founders of Carlisle, said the school's goal was to, quote, kill the Indian, save the man. This is very triggering for a lot of Indian people. Um, especially survivors of, of boarding schools and things. Those boarding schools went all the way up in, in, at, uh, into the 70s. You know, so we still have relatives that are alive that suffered uh, at these boarding schools. Um, and so we're looking at intergenerational trauma. From 1879 until 1918, more than 10,000 Native American children from 140 tribes attended Carlisle. Some of these kids would die from poor conditions at the school, such as exposure to infectious diseases. Nearly six years ago, youth from the Rosebud tribe visited Carlisle, discovering graves on the side of the road. After acknowledging their remains, Carlisle agreed to repatriation. On Thursday, the remains of those children made their 1,000-mile journey from Carlisle to Sioux City. Last night, they were greeted by members of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe and other local Native American groups. A prayer service and dinner was held at War Eagle Park to honor and acknowledge their story. Organizers say it was also an opportunity to take time and to heal themselves. This morning, their journey continued. The motorcade, complete with a police and motorcycle escort, left the Tyson Event Center as they headed west toward their final destination at the Rosebud Reservation in South Dakota. A part of their route went through the Santee Sioux Reservation in Niobrara, Nebraska. KTIV's Brett Mayerson picks up the emotional story from there. Friday morning, the caravan with the remains stopped at Ohia Casino Resort in Niobrara, Nebraska where members of the Santee Sioux and Rosebud Sioux tribe gathered for a ceremony with prayers and songs to honor the deceased students. Santee Sioux members say that this was a big moment. Whenever you can recover the remains of your relatives that were deceased in another area, uh, I consider that a victory. Trudell says there are people on the reservations related to those that are returning home. One of those relatives is Stephen Moose of the Rosebud Sioux tribe. Moose says his aunt recently informed him of the relation to some of the deceased students. I'm an advocate for children. And when you understand uh, what, what, what happened back then to the children, and for to have them finally go home is very humbling. Um, it's heartbreaking, but yet um, I'm happy about it. The two sentiments echoed today at the ceremony were that these children will never be forgotten and that no matter what, Native Americans are still here. In Niobrara, Nebraska, Brett Mayerson, KTIV News 4. Trudell says now that the children are home, this is a moment for all Native American tribes to celebrate. Carlisle wasn't the only Indian school in the country. Many smaller institutions did exist, which served the very same purpose, to assimilate Indian children and break ties to their families, tribes, and homelands. One such school was the Genoa Indian School in Nance County in East Central Nebraska. The school enrolled thousands of children from over 40 Indian nations during its 50 years in operation from 1884 to 1934. Citizens in the town of Genoa established the Genoa U.S. Indian School Foundation in 1990. They also created an interpretive center at the school's manual training building, which is on the National Register of Historic Places. 
If you'd like to learn more about Genoa, Carlisle, and the Indian Industrial School program, you can find a link inside the story at KTIV.com. The weekend is here, and you might be wondering if any rain chances could affect your outdoor plans. Storm Team 4 Chief Meteorologist Ron DeMars joins us with first weather. Ron, how about it? Yeah, it's really no rain these past couple of days. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, very nice out there. As we head into the next week, it gets warm and maybe a little rain chance this weekend, especially in the western parts of the KTIV viewing area. You're going to stand a little better chance, and a lot of those chances come Saturday night into Sunday morning. In the meantime, here's how we look right now from our Spencer cam. A little bit of a hazy sky has been out there throughout the day, and kind of the same kind of a look in the sky on our Norfolk cam right now. Temperatures still hovering right around around that 80 degree mark and dew points went up a little bit today on into the low 60s but by tomorrow morning it's going to be pretty nice and that's good news because we have a parade going on the early crossroads days parade starts at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning we'll be there flinging bings i'll be uh, there as well so yell my name loud say fling me a bing we'll get that to you 74 degrees will be the temperature at that time much more about your forecast is coming up very soon matt all right look forward to it ron thank you we have breaking news tonight into the ktiv newsroom traffic blocked by an accident in the northbound lane of Interstate 29. Now, this is basically between the Wesley Parkway exit, which is just going to be out of frame in the lower right corner of your screen, and the Virginia Street downtown exit, which is just out, just into frame there on the left-hand side of your screen. This all is according to the Iowa DOT and verified by our Prospect Hill camera. We'll, of course, have more information on the accident that caused this backup and the backup itself as it becomes available. A judge has denied a request for more evidence to be released on new claims that Christian Bahena Rivera wasn't the man who killed University of Iowa student Molly Tibbetts. In May, Bahena Rivera was convicted of first-degree murder in the stabbing death of Tibbetts. He was scheduled to be sentenced to that mandatory life prison term Thursday. That was delayed after his attorney claimed an Iowa prison inmate named Gavin Jones admitted to another inmate that he was the one who killed Tibbetts and not Bahena Rivera. The defense also claimed from witnesses that Tibbetts' kidnapping was part of a sex trafficking ring involving a man by the name of James Lowe. A hearing will still be held July 27th for the judge to consider a motion for a new trial in the case. A suspect in a Sioux City shooting back in December has now been arrested in the state of Indiana. The Sioux City Police Department says 26-year-old Rudy Johnson of Sioux City was arrested today by members of the Great Lakes Regional Fugitive Task Force. Johnson is wanted in connection to a shooting at the Mavericks Gentlemen's Club, which sent Krista Kruckenberg, a 26-year-old waitress and bartender, to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Johnson is now awaiting extradition back to Iowa. Back in Iowa for the first time since the closing days of the 2020 presidential campaign, former Vice President Mike Pence stumped for Western Iowa Congressman Randy Feenstra in the Republicans' district today. Supporters of both the former VP and Congressman Feenstra gathered at Dean's Family Classic Car Museum in Sioux Center for the inaugural Feenstra Family Picnic. Folks could grab burgers and other picnic food before Feenstra, Pence, and other speakers took the stage. Feenstra thank the public who came out to support him and the other Republican members of Iowa's congressional delegation. We do so much together. It's just amazing when you have an Iowa delegation that we are calling each other, talking to each other all the time, figuring out how we're going to vote, what we're going to say, how we're going to do things. And we all have these conservative values. And it's just so grateful that we all can work together. Former Vice President Mike Pence also spoke to the crowd. He touted Feenstra's time in office and addressed his own time in the Trump administration. In a very short period of time, Randy Feenstra, I can tell you firsthand, uh, has won the respect of members of Congress because of his strong commitment to his faith, to the conservative agenda. Both Feenstra and Pence took time to visit with folks after the event was over. Start training now because Sioux City is preparing to host a marathon. We'll tell you about the Mighty Mo Run, the first such event in Sioux City in more than a decade. Maybe biking is more your style. Sioux City is exploring how it can be more bike friendly. We've got those stories after the break. First Weather is brought to you by Bombgars. Enjoy an evening of fun and live music as Arnold's Park presents Live at the Lake. July 17th will be Led Zeppelin tribute band Led Zeppelica with special guest Ken Valdez. So be sure to bring your chairs or blankets and join us for a great live concert. Brought to you by KTIV and these sponsors.
Sparklight connects your world with reliable high-speed internet. Work smarter, learn better, and play faster with up to 100 meg internet, only $39 a month for six months. Call 855-808-2737 to enjoy consistent speeds and worry-free Wi-Fi. Ready for a stronger connection? Get up to 100 meg internet, only $39 a month for six months. Call 855-808-2737 today or visit sparklight.com slash offers. Frozen, yet a Coke. Not a solid, but not a liquid. They're a paradox of deliciousness. Cool off with any of our icy Minute Maid slushies, frozen Coca-Cola, or frozen Fanta flavors. Every two years, the world pauses. And people across the country and around the globe share in this remarkable moment. Where the world comes together. It's happening thousands of miles from Siouxland. Yet we can all be there. For every amazing moment. As if we had front row seats. When it comes to the Tokyo Olympics, there's only one KTIV, Siouxland's news channel. Live from Signal Hill, you're watching News 4 at 6 with Matt Breen, Stella Daskalakis, Chief Meteorologist Ron DeMars and Sports Force with Brad Pouch on KTIV Siouxland's News Channel. For the first time in over a decade, Sioux City will host a marathon. We're talking about the Mighty Mo Run. It's a three-day event. It features a 5K, 10K, half marathon, and full marathon. Organizers say the race will be timed and scored for runners looking for those personal records, and aid stations will be set every 1.5 miles. Co-race director Jim Ewalt says proceeds from the run will help benefit the Athletes Run and Train Foundation, also known as the Heart Foundation. What's happening is, is more and more coaches were, were paying for kids' shoes because uh, kids couldn't afford them. So that's kind of where the Heart Foundation really came into play. Uh, he needed funds to be able to buy buy more shoes for more kids. So that uh, uh, there, there's, a, there's a good charity behind this. The full marathon will start and end at the Siouxland Expo Center at 550 South Lafayette Street. It'll follow the Sioux City Riverfront Trail System and parts of the South Sioux City Trail System through the Flatwater Crossing development. KTIV is a proud sponsor of the Mighty Mo Run. Pre-registration is open through July 31st. For registration details and race information, just check out this story right now at KTIV.com. A new study is taking place in Sioux City to determine the public's interest in bike lanes. The survey will look at priority needs for on-street bike lanes throughout town. Survey organizers say they help folks in the community fill out that survey to make sure they put those bike lanes where they make the most sense in the community. They expect the results by the fall of this year. There's a new addition to downtown Sioux City's business district. The business is open in the historic Davidson Building, the very first since renovations were completed. We'll take you inside when we come back. And after another very nice day, I'm sure you're wondering if there are any changes coming our way for the weekend. I'll have your forecast for you up next. Scene of the crash is back July 16th and 17th at the Dakota Thurston County Fair. Come out July 16th and 17th to see hunt runs from all over the Midwest and tons of activities. Mini bike races, kids activities, a pin-up contest, hunt run dirt drags, live auction, bands, food vendors, and so much more. Admission $12 per person and free for kids under 10. Plus, free tent or non-hookup camping. A portion of the proceeds help our youth learn important trade careers. So come on by and support the cause. They listened to me. Me sentí escuchada. The nurse really helped. I could see just how much they cared. I was impressed. I love my dog. So proud Floyd Valley is in our community. Those are words we hear every day from our patients and their families. Floyd Valley Healthcare is more than buildings and equipment. It's our team of people that make a difference every day. Your community. Your health. Your life. Floyd Valley Healthcare. All Denny's pancakes are made to order with fresh buttermilk, but this month's Spotlight Stack is a patriot. Fresh, sweet, and full of freedom. New red, white, and blue pancakes. This month's Spotlight Stack. See you at Denny's. Get all the latest updates and alerts with the KTIV News 4 app. Stay up to date with breaking news alerts, live streaming newscasts, and all the latest headlines right from the palm of your hand. The KTIV News 4 app, available now. 
is my dream to be in gymnastics? Simone Biles. Why is that? I want to be here someday. You do? So you want to be an Olympian? Yeah. Sunday on KTIV, I talk with future little Olympians about what it takes to be the next Simone Biles. Is just instilling a dream in them from a very young age. So they're gonna watch the Olympics and they're, you know, right now gonna want to be those kids. KTIV's Claire Bradshaw shows you what it takes. Sunday on KTIV News 4 at 10. Well, it was another day here in Sioux City of hitting two degrees below average for our high temperature. There's another nice morning start in the upper 50s, but things are going to start to change some, especially next week. Outside right now, this our Okaboji cam. Still a, a few clouds out there. We've had probably cloudy skies throughout the day, a little bit of a hazy sky at times, too. You're seeing some of that on our Lakeview cam. As of uh, current temperatures right now, we're around 80 degrees here in Sioux City and throughout the viewing area. This our Blackbird Bend Casino cam. The way things started this morning, it looked a little bit different out there. We had those areas of fog, and Joe Reclitus over in Wayne, Nebraska, nice enough to take a picture and show us what things were looking like there in Wayne. So after that soupy started, it didn't take too long for things to uh, dry out. And I tell you what, speaking of drying out, we have been just that here in Sioux City, way too dry. Look at these numbers. Since June 1st, we're down precipitation-wise by 3.24 inches. For the entire year of 2021, we're down by just over 3.5 inches. Then it really gets bad when you start to take last year into account as well. The 365-day departure here in Sioux City has us down by 8.6 inches. And since January of 2020, down by nearly 13 inches. So yes, moisture is still needed. Still nothing coming at us right now. The bigger storms today have been well off to the east. Had a few storms firing up way out to the west. And eventually, one of those uh, cells is going to try to make its way down a ridge over the weekend. This is a ridge of high pressure. That's why the temperatures are warmer out that way. And eventually, that could give us our own chance of seeing a little bit of rain Saturday night into Sunday morning, especially in western Siouxland. Here's how it plays out in your Storm Team 4 future track. Even tonight, you see a few showers way out there in the central part of Nebraska. So I think that mostly stays out of the KTIV viewing area. But you can see it does throw a few clouds our way. And future track even tries to pop up a quick shower tomorrow morning. More than likely that doesn't happen because that's the only model really doing that. But as we get into our uh, Saturday night and into Sunday morning, there's 7 a.m. for example, there is going to be a slight chance of a few thunderstorms, especially to the west, but maybe even here in Sioux City. And there's a slight chance of that continuing a little bit later in the day on Sunday as well. As for our highs today, well, here they were. Carol and Denison hitting 81 and Ida Grove today, 80 degrees. So all these numbers just a little bit below average for this time of year. 81 also in Vermilion, Wayne and Creighton in Niobrara today, 83. And right here in Sioux City, our low is 58. We did top out at that 83 degree mark I was telling you about. And on the allergy scene, here's where we stand. 4.3 tomorrow, not a whole lot different at 3.8. Grasses, dock and cattail being the top allergens. So for tonight, upper 50s and lower 60s for those overnight lows. And then more of the same tomorrow, basically. Highs again in the low 80s, and then tomorrow night there's that slight chance of a thunderstorm, especially in the western parts of the viewing area, with lows in the low 60s, and then maybe a few morning storms on Sunday as well. Sunday, 83 degrees for our high. Monday, partly cloudy and 85, and then the real heat starts to move in by Tuesday, looking at a high temperature of 88 degrees. You get near 90 on Wednesday, Thursday, as well as Friday, and even on a Saturday, we could be near 90 degrees for our high temperature. A dry stretch of weather, we could use some rain. It really is, yes. Thanks, thanks, Ron. We're still watching that backup of traffic on the northbound lanes of Interstate 29. Here's the scene now. Traffic looks a little thinner through that stretch, but still backed up between the downtown Nebraska Street exit on the left-hand side of the screen and the Wesley Parkway exit on the right-hand side of your screen, just out of frame there. We're gathering details about what caused this accident. It appears that the vehicles are still in place. That's continuing to cause the backup, but you can see both Sioux City Fire Rescue and Wreckers are on scene to kind of move those vehicles out of the way and get traffic moving again. We'll have more information on that backup as soon as it becomes available. It's Friday. That means it's time for this week's pick of the litter. This week's pick is Dora, a one year old domestic short hair cat. Dora isn't used to being around dogs or kids, but could be open to it. She's relatively independent and would like to go to a home with a big window to look out of. If you'd like to adopt Dora or any other animal from the Siouxland Humane Society, simply visit them in person or call 712-252-2614. Renovations at the Warrior Hotel and Davidson Building in downtown Sioux City started in early 2019. 
Today, the first retail store at the Davidson opened its doors to the public. Rooted Boutique is the newest addition to the historic building. It's a local contemporary clothing boutique that carries pieces for both men and women. It's the second location for Rooted Boutique. The first is in Holstein, Iowa. The boutique will host a fashion show showcasing some of their pieces at the Warrior Banquet Room. It's tonight at 7.30. The event is open to the public. Jason Muller in the sports now, and even though it's July, Still, talk, talking about basketball. Matt, it's never too early to start thinking about basketball. The Iowa Hawkeyes allowed the media to join them during their summer workouts today, and we'll hear from senior guard Jordan Bohannon. And the Explorers wrapped up their homestand last night. We'll have a recap and a look ahead at an important, steer at an important series. Sports Force is next. The Daily Pollen Count, brought to you by the Ear, Nose, and Throat Consultants Allergy Clinic. Every five days, someone in Nebraska dies from an opioid overdose. These are our family, friends, and neighbors. But you can be ready to help stop these preventable deaths. OP Rescue helps you find the overdose reversal drug naloxone to have on hand. If someone overdoses, OP Rescue shows you four steps to save them. Don't wait until it's too late to save a life. Install the free app for Apple or Android now. Make your way over to Bino and Sherry's Casino in North Sioux City, where the fun never ends. With over 100 machines, come experience the large variety of games. We have something for everyone. Sign up today for Bino and Sherry's loyalty card. Get points, earn rewards, and don't forget to check out our Big Bucks program, too. To learn more, follow and like our Facebook page. Come to Bino and Sherry's, where the winners play and the players win. Roundup Weed and Grass Killer starts working immediately and kills down to the root. The 36.8 ounce concentrate plus and the one gallon ready to use trigger spray are both on sale now at Baumgars. Purina Equine Senior Horse Feed is formulated to deliver complete balanced nutrition and high quality fiber for the older horse. Plus it's easy to chew and your horse will love the taste. What you need. I don't just play someone brainy on TV. I'm an actual neuroscientist, and I love the science behind Nariva Plus. Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nariva Plus fuels six key indicators of brain performance. More brain performance, yes please. Nariva, think bigger. Your home for the Tokyo Olympics is KTIV, Siouxland's news channel. On Dateline's Friday premiere, a sister's revelation. She said, I know who killed mom. A cold-blooded betrayal. There's this moment in time that sort of changes everything. Dateline tonight, 10, 9 central. There's a night when the world comes together, creating a moment as beautiful as any you've ever seen opening ceremony of the Tokyo Olympics. Next DT, we're with Jason Sudeikis. I'm just having fun. Celebrating Ted Lasso's 20 Emmy nominations. Ooh Plus, she's your angel. Yeah. We're gonna bless her with something today. Come on, All right, let's go. let's go. Only we are behind the scenes with Anthony Ramos for his secret celebrity renovation surprise. Yeah, I'm grateful we gotta do that together. Then we're feasting in the Bahamas with world-renowned chef Marcus Samuelson. Oh. Yes. Next yes. DT. Yes. Tonight at 6.30 on KTIV. Closed captioning brought to you by MultiCare Health Clinic. Welcome back. As we get closer to the fall, it is never too early to think about basketball. 
The Iowa Hawkeyes men's basketball team had their summer media availability during one of their recent workouts. One player on everyone's mind is sixth year senior Jordan Bohannon. The 23 year old guard averaged just under nine points last season while racking up 33 assists throughout 10 games. Bohannon only played 10 games because he was still recovering from a hip surgery. The veteran guard spoke about the process of returning to the Hawkeyes. I was full force ahead and you know, Coach McCaffrey came to me and um, right after CJ decided to transfer and you know, just said he wanted me back and kind of just went through the recruiting process all over again. So it was kind of weird being a 23-year-old you know, and having Coach McCaffrey wanting you to come back for another year of college. So that was definitely bizarre. But Right now, there are only three games on the Hawkeyes schedule, Virginia, Iowa State, and Utah State. They will release the rest of their schedule at a later date. The Sioux City Explorers wrapped up their brief homestand against the Sioux Falls Canaries last night. The, seri the series came down to the final game. The X's were trying to win the series, while the Canaries were looking to split. Pitching took center stage in the final game as both Brett Adcock and Canaries pitcher Angel Ventura had quality starts. Ventura was just a little bit better, though, as he tossed seven shutout innings for the Canaries. The Canaries were able to get a run in the second and another in the fifth, and that would be all they would need. Brett Adcock took the loss as the Canaries held on 2-0. The Explorers are starting a three-game series in Cleburne tonight. The teams are in a virtual tie for second, both three and a half games behind Kansas City. The smaller classes in Iowa are wrapping up their district baseball tournaments this weekend. We'll kick things off in 1A. The District 1 final has Remsen St. Mary's matched up with Galen Catholic. In District 2, Newell Fonda will take on Bishop Garrigan. Both games will start at 7. Also in Class 1A in District 16, Kingsley Pearson will take on Woodbury Central in what should be a good game. First pitch is at 7. In 2A District 2, the Highway 9 rivalry will determine the district champ as Estreville Lincoln Central faces off against Spirit Lake. In District 1, Unity Christian will play West Lyon in what should be a close game. Start time for both games is 7. And wrapping up the area district finals action, Pocahontas area will take on Alta Aurelia. The Indians took the regular season matchup 12-5. That's all I got for sports, guys. Good, good time for baseball. It's a great time of year, and the forecast is also cooperating for those games because naturally they're all outdoors, right? Exactly. We're a touch below average right now. That's the way we stay for the weekend. Low 80s it is looking like for us. Our best chance of rain is going to be in western Siouxland Saturday night and into Sunday morning. Otherwise, we dry things out, and we will really warm it up then heading into next weekend. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> thank you. today's a big day. <laughs> Happy birthday to Mr. Matt Breen. I did this so I could sing, then he told me, no, we don't want you to sing. No, no, so, it's too much. <laughs> so I thought a graphic would be more appropriate. That's nice, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a big milestone birthday yet, it's birthday 49. Next year will be the big milestone birthday. You said it's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, I lied. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't talk to Ron for weeks after. Right, this. yeah. Thanks, Ron. And thanks for joining us, folks. ET's coming up next. We'll see you back here again at 10. What's up with